God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Good morning, and welcome to the Church of Christ Congregational. It is nice to be with all of you this morning. Whether you are worshiping with us for the first time or for the first time in a while, whether you have been coming here every day of your life or somewhere in between, whether you are here in the sanctuary or worshiping from the comforts of your home, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I don't have a lot of announcements this morning, but I do want to point out one typo in the bulletin. If you would look under the prayer of confession, opening prayer of confession, the second sentence after the word physical should be the word cells. <laughs> Second sentence after the word physical should be the word cells. We will be having our family breakfast next Sunday from eight to 10 across the parking lot in the parish hall. And if there are still some of you who have not received star words and would like to, I am happy to text, email, mail, leave outside, any of those options so that you may get one. Um, please just let me know. I have two more ready to go out. So if you contacted me in the last week, I did not forget there on my desk and we'll go out first thing tomorrow. But I do still have plenty of star words. So if you would like some, please let me know. At this time, I invite you to take a deep breath and center yourself for worship. We're going to begin this morning by listening to our Threshold Moment song. After I speak, you are invited to sing along too. The words can be found on the insert in your bulletin. Each of us is created, precious and holy, a vessel of embodied love. We have been through a harrowing time that has shattered our sense of wholeness, body, mind, and spirit, like a glass vessel fractured into pieces. Let us enter a season of recovery as we focus on Jesus, the healer of every ill. Each glass begins as something whole and yet discarded. As it tumbled by the sea, it is broken and polished until it becomes a treasured mineral gem. We do not embrace that suffering is necessary or God-given, but that suffering is a part of life. When pain comes and brokenness enters our lives, Jesus reaches out to touch and remind us of the treasure that we all are, worthy of new life in the midst of hopelessness. In a time when pandemic has wreaked havoc on our world, we begin by affirming our journey to physical health.
Jesus encouraged people to open up about their lives, to speak truth no matter how broken. This is the beginning of compassion for ourselves and for others. It is the beginning of healing. The Latin origins of the word confess is to study and acknowledge. This will be a season of studying how we can be a healing presence in our community. To do this, we acknowledge our need to restore our own holy vessels. Let us pray together our prayer of confession. Creator God, we are bodies fashioned by your hand in your own image, shapes and colors of diverse and immense beauty. And yet too often, we have ignored the sacred nature of our physical selves. The holy vessels you have fashioned are tired and suffering, ravaged by months of disruptive rhythms and ailment. Our fragility has come into full view and we are frightened. We cannot fathom the proportions of loss and so we look away, sometimes even from our own needs. Help us, healer. Show us our strength. Forgive our inertia. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care. In this silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. I invite you to feel a warmth begin to arise within the core of your body. It may help to have your eyes closed. Imagine a warm orb of light deep within you. This warm glow begins to emerge from the recesses of your inner being to fill and flood your whole body until your skin is glowing with it radiating outward. You are surrounded by light. Feel this warmth wrap you as a blanket of assurance. Know this, God's love and grace surround you no matter what. You are a precious and holy vessel right now. Christ's light is a treasure given freely for you, for me, for all. Take a deep breath in to let this truth fill you and breathe out with the relief of assurance. I now invite you to imagine the warmth that surrounds you extending to those who may be next to you in close proximity. Imagine it extending beyond your walls to the neighborhood, to the wider community, the church, and seeing it spread like the rising sun, let it expand to all the world. Let this be our peace. Amen. If you have not already, I invite you to open your eyes.
May the peace of Christ be with you. I invite you now to stand as you are able, in body or in spirit, and join us in our gathering hymn number 179 in the New Century Hymnal, which is the Black Bound Book. Please be seated. I invite you to join me for a moment of prayer before we hear our readings this morning. Gracious God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, quicken our understanding that we may receive the testimony of Scripture and believe in the signs that reveal your presence. Amen. During this worship series, in addition to hearing from the Gospel of Matthew, we will hear a quote or two that will tie into our worship theme. 
from Walter Anderson. Bad things do happen. How I respond to them defines my character and the quality of my life. I can choose to sit in perpetual sadness, immobilized by the gravity of my loss, or I can choose to rise from the pain and treasure the most precious gift I have, life itself. And from Richard Paul Evans, some people spend so much time hunting treasure that they fail to see it all around them. It's like sifting through gold to find the silt. And our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 8, verses 1 through 4 and 16 through 17, and can be found on page 6 in the New Testament section of your Pew Bible. When Jesus had come down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And there was a leper who came to him and knelt before him saying, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand and touched him saying, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Then Jesus said to him, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. That evening they brought to him many who were possessed with demons and he cast out the spirits with a word and cured all who were sick. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. Here ends our reading. Hi. 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 Uh, my name is Lily Steinmeier. I'm a member of the church here. Usually I sit over there. Hi, Mom. Um, <laughs> I'm in the process of finishing up my last year of undergrad, and I'm also in the process of applying to divinity school, so I am really beyond grateful to Pastor Sarah and all of you guys that I have the chance to talk. Oh, I can talk about mask up. That'll be better. Perfect. So I'm really beyond grateful that I have the chance to talk to all of you guys today. I am going to start where our scripture today ended. It was referencing a verse from Isaiah, which Matthew restates as, he took our infirmities and bore our diseases. I looked through a few translations of the scripture, one of which was the International Children's Bible. This is a translation of the original Greek and Hebrew texts in simpler language. I figured I could use all the help I could get, and I thought it would be an interesting contrast to what I'm used to reading. They translate this phrase as, he took our suffering on him and he felt our pain for us. Christ was human. He knew what it meant to be human in the visceral way that we all do. The beautiful parts of it, the horrible parts of it, the loving and hopeful parts, and the painful and ugly parts. Jesus was approached by a leper. This man had some kind of skin disease, possibly what we refer to today as leprosy or Hansen's disease, but just as likely some other disease that produces a rash on the skin. Jesus saw the leper. The Old Testament goes into a great deal of detail about how leprosy is characterized and how lepers are supposed to behave. In Leviticus, it states, the person who has the leprous disease shall wear torn clothes and let the hair of his head be disheveled. He shall cover his upper lip and cry out, unclean, unclean. He shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease. He is unclean. He shall live alone. 
his dwelling shall be outside the camp. Jesus saw the leper. He saw the physical discomfort he was in. He saw the ways that this man was forced out of his community. He saw all of the unkindnesses that were inflicted on this man in the name of doing what was proper. Leprosy was often characterized as a visual representation of sin and sometimes as a punishment directly inflicted on an individual by God. Jesus saw the shame and the loneliness. The leper came before him, breaking the rules that enforced his isolation. He knelt and addressed Jesus as Lord. He never questioned Jesus's ability to heal him just his willingness. Jesus saw his desperation, his hope, his faith. Jesus saw this leper. He saw a whole and treasured human being and reached out to touch him. We know that Jesus did not need to touch this man to heal him, but he likely knew that this man needed his touch to be healed. How long had it been since this man had been touched with kindness? Jesus saw this man in his entirety and chose him as worthy of his love and of his healing. This healing was not only that of his physical body. He was cleansed. He was given his home back, his community back. He could now be seen by his community as he was seen by Christ, as a person instead of as a leper. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. I learned something recently that made this scripture feel very alive to me. The Order of St. Anthony, also known as the Hospital Brothers of St. Anthony, used to have a monastery in Isenheim, France. In the 13th, 14th, 15th century, they cared for the sick. They were known for their work with people suffering from St. Anthony's fire. This was their term for ergot poisoning or ergotism. Ergot poisoning is caused by consuming Claviceps purpurea, a fungus that grows on rye and other cereals. There are two main types of ergot poisoning, convulsive, named for its painful spasms and seizures, and gangrenous, named for the low blood flow to extremities like fingers and toes, which would lead to loss of sensation and ultimately loss of the affected areas themselves. The monastery also treated those who suffered from the bubonic plague. Between 1512 and 1516, this monastery had an altarpiece created for them. It was sculpted by Nicholas of Hagenau and painted by Matthias Grunewald. It depicted many scenes, but the foremost was Christ. Christ during his crucifixion, afflicted by St. Anthony's fire. It was used as a kind of art therapy as part of the treatment at this hospital Patients were prescribed by the monks to view and reflect on this piece of art. I read about this altar in The Lost Art of Dying by L.S. Dugdale, M.D., who described her experience of visiting the altarpiece now housed in the Unterlinden Museum. She said, and there he was, that anguished man on a cross, larger than life, bearing all the marks of ergotism. His skin was covered in sores from whipping and diseases, his lips and toes tinted blue, his spindly fingers splayed open, the tips twisting around the nails in his hands. Borrowing from Abraham Hestrel, this is Jürgen Moltmann's pathetic Christ, one with pathos, one who suffers. In the panel to his left stands Anthony, who protects and heals and protects from St. Anthony's fire. The panel to his right portrays Sebastian, patron saint of archers and chronic plague sufferers. The message of this composition goes beyond the familiar, Christ died for you. It tells viewers, Christ suffers and dies right alongside you, victim of the plague. 
of St. Anthony's fire. His body is ruined like yours. He understands your pain. You are not alone. This beautiful work of art was created for those who were sick and scared and suffering. And in a way, Jesus was as well. There is a certain kind of vulnerability that is brought out by sickness and pain. It is sometimes when we are at our ugliest, our least pleasing. When so much of our minds are taken up by discomfort, it can be hard to feel like ourselves. There can be a fear in sitting in discomfort, a doubt. Why isn't Jesus healing me like he healed the leper, like he healed all the sick? Why isn't it better? Am I alone? And these questions can bring out yet more fear and doubt. Is my faith not strong enough? We sometimes take all of these questions, fears, doubts, and confusions, and set them in opposition to our faith and love of God. I would challenge all of us to instead take these questions fears, doubts, and confusions, and recognize them as a part of our faith, a part of our love of God. If you are not committed to God, you would have nothing to doubt. If you did not love God and your relationship with the holy, there would be nothing to fear losing. They do not make you less worthy of love or care, and they are understood by the all-knowing. I would challenge all of us to hold space for these feelings with God, to recognize them as symptoms of our pain and not as signs that there is something wrong with our faith. When we try to ignore it, leave this fear, confusion, doubt to fester, it will keep doing harm, not only to our relationship with God, but to our relationship with those around us. These are the kinds of feelings that have been coming up going two years on the pandemic when we thought it would all be over and it just keeps going. The pain we feel missing birthdays and weddings and funerals. Knowing our friends and family are sick or hurting and not always being able to go to them the way we would like to. Watching gas prices rise and certain items grow scarcer on the shelves. The pain can make us turn outwards, seek an easy solution. It must be their fault. Why can't they just do what's right so this can all be over for us? It is much easier to blame a nameless other than to think about all of the societal structures that enable this to happen. The people who can't work from home, the people without paid sick leave who aren't getting tested because they can't afford to be away from work that long. The people who live in areas of the country that cannot access testing or vaccines, the people in other countries who can't access testing or vaccines. The structures of oppression that have led this pandemic to disproportionately affect those with lower incomes and people of color. It is much easier to stew in our own pain than to see the people all around us who are sharing it. Those who have lost loved ones, the people who have lost their jobs and are struggling with financial insecurity, those who live alone without households to hold them, the people who now fear crowds and closeness and touch. It is so much easier Maybe that is why the villagers in our scripture leaned into what was proper. They likely blamed this leper for his sickness, for being unclean. They didn't look at him, they ignored him. When they weren't ignoring him, they were likely cruel because it is easier than recognizing him as a person in pain. And it is easier than recognizing how he represents our own fear that we could be sick like him, forsaken like him, alone like him. But we are not Christians because it is easy. We are Christians because Christ looked at this man and saw him and touched him. He felt our pain for us. 
when we do not always know how to feel it for ourselves. He chose this man, this outcast, this leper, as worthy of knowledge, of love, of kindness. And he chooses us in our pain, desperation, fear, doubt. He sees us in our entirety and he treasures us. I would like you to take a moment right now and try to see yourself as Christ sees you. What whole and beautiful person would he see and know and treasure? Now think of the people in your lives. Maybe the people that you love or the people you struggle with. The people you see every day or those you haven't seen in years. How does Christ see them in their entirety? With all their pain and faults as clear to him as a rash on their skin, but not taking away any part of their worth. Hold space for yourself. Touch the parts of you that are hurting with understanding and ask God to do the same. Ask for help if you need it, as this man with leprosy did. That man didn't have a community around him to hold him up, but we do. A community who can touch us with the same care and love that Jesus showed. Hold space for others for the hard truths and the pain that we all share, we can all be the touch of Jesus, the action of a person and of a deity who has seen and listened and takes blessed action towards healing and connection. We can be the eyes and ears of Jesus, listening and seeing what is hard and painful and seeing humanity through it all. We can be his hand that reaches out to touch, even if we cannot perform miracles ourselves. Sometimes people need the simple miracle of being known. Throughout this worship series, we will begin our prayer time by listening to a song of preparation. It is my hope that the choir will sing it as the weeks go on, but for now we will listen to a recording sung by Chuck Bell. I invite you to be in the spirit of prayer. healer of our every ill, especially our malady of separation and fear. We come before you to make our petitions known. 
Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us, showing us the way to recover from the toxicities and grief of our time. As demolished pieces that are treasured when found, we trust that beauty from brokenness is possible when we seek to bind together that which is wounded. We pray especially for those who have experienced the physical loss of family and friends in the pandemic and those who are still suffering the consequences of the illness. We pray for each person who suffers in body in other ways, weariness from inactivity or weariness from overactivity during this time. We pray for those whose treatment of maladies have been put on hold and those who suffered isolation in their illness, whatever the cause. We pray grateful thanks for the medical staff everywhere around the world who have shown unbelievable strength and stamina. And we mourn the demise of too many caregivers who risked their lives for our sake. We pray this day for Randy and Pam, Herman and Nadine, Andrew, Anthony, Penny and Debbie, we pray for Michelle and Selena, Jason and Debbie, Barbara and Carl. And we pause now to lift up the names of those on our hearts. Healing God, Holy Comforter, we ask these prayers, both spoken and said in silence, in the strong name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. During this next part of worship, not today, but going forward, we will have some guest speakers from people who live in and around our community that are going to share with us a little bit of information on how we can contribute to better health in certain areas. Today's topic was physical health, and our physical health speaker cannot join us until later in the series. So I thought I would take this time to just let you know that during this time after our prayers, we will be hearing from different people in our community, most who you probably know, actually or know of. So just look forward to that time. And I look forward to connecting our church with the wider community. The words of Jesus we heard in this week's healing story were, I do choose, be made clean. Faced with a request and given the choice, Jesus chooses to say yes. And he says yes to each precious, and treasured life. Recovered wholeness is offered to everyone and will look different for each one of us. I invite you to take up your piece of beach glass now that you received as you came in this morning and examine it closely. Notice the worn edges and the color the feeling of the texture and the thickness. Examine it as a treasure that is completely unique, which of course it is. Then shift your thinking to your own rough edges. What broken edges in your own life need help. 
What will you do in this season of recovery to focus on healing of body, mind, and spirit? Take a moment to think on this, and then when you are ready, enclose the broken piece in your hand and hold it to your heart, breathing deeply and inviting that spirit to live and move in you in a special way over the next six weeks. Keep your peace close at hand this week, on your nightstand, maybe in your pocket. Maybe you can keep it on your desk or in the little console where you would keep a cup in your car. Some place where you can look at it and feel it regularly this week. Each week, I'm going to demonstrate an action that you can do with your piece of glass at home, most likely. It's tricky to do it for everyone in here. If you are worshiping from home and would like a piece of sea glass, please contact me. You can write in the comments, you can send me a message or an email, you can call the office. Um, we have plenty of pieces and I would be happy to make sure that you get one. Jesus's healing actions often get buzz from onlookers. Some are amazed and in awe and sing his praises. Some are bewildered and wonder about this teacher. Some are disgruntled and feel threatened by the boundaries he breaks and the change he invites. We are perhaps prone to all of these feelings at one time or another. Our own work of recovery will sometimes feel immediate. We will be immediately refreshed and sometimes it will demand uncomfortable effort but the rewards are great. We are also working towards something communal during this season. How can we as a church community become a health hub through our ministry and mission? The needs are so great, especially now. Throughout this worship series, I invite you to explore the possibilities for a new or renewed commitment to a contribution that we can make at the Church of Christ Congregational to our larger community's efforts to recover from what we've been going through. If you have any ideas, please share them with me. If you would like to make a donation and are here in our sanctuary, you may leave it in the basket on the table behind the last pew as you exit. If you would like to make an online donation, you may do so on our website, www.goshenchurch.com. And if you would like to mail in a donation, please mail it to PO Box 216. I invite you now to stand as you are able, in body or in spirit, and join us in our closing hymn, number 335 in the Christian Praise Hymnal, which is the Red Bound Book.
seated. I invite you now to join me in our common commission, which can be found on the insert in your bulletin. Let us now go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no person evil for evil, strengthening the faint hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all people, loving and serving the Lord and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now go with confidence as treasures of God, recovering your depth of love for all and our joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears, I choose you. And may the spirit hover, move, and deliver salve to your soul in a spring in your step. Amen.